Hello everyone, Vision Building Women. This is Dr. Sandra and welcome to Impact Academy. I hope you have had a fantastic day and are ready for Impact Academy. Tonight we are talking about the balance that you need in your season and that is finding the right balance in the right season tonight is going to be another one of those teachings where we are going to dive deep <laughs> so go ahead get your pencil and paper ready so that you can begin to take notes and get what you need for tonight because as I said we are going to be talking about finding the right balance in the right season so I hope you are ready I hope you are are, uh, have, have are ready for tonight's teaching because I tell you it's going to be it's going to be deep it's going to be one of those teachings where you're going to have an, lots of aha moments and I'm excited to teach it tonight and um, just excited about about tonight's teaching so uh, hopefully uh, you really can't share this particular teaching because it's inside of a group but if you know women that need to have balance in their life or struggle with finding balance then make sure they join the group okay they won't be able to get on tonight's teaching live but they will be able to see parts one two and three of uh, when this is part three this is part three and we're gonna keep on going with balance until we end it okay We've got a whole lot more to go. There are at least at least six or seven more parts of balance that we need to talk about before we're done with that piece of it, okay? So, for those of you that are joining in via live stream, welcome, welcome, welcome. For those of you that are joining in via the replay, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are glad to have you here, all right? So, as I said, tonight we are going to be talking about finding the right balance in the right season. Finding the right balance in the right season. Hello, everyone. I see so many of you are joining in. Welcome, welcome. You're saying hello. Hi, Shanika, Cheryl, uh, Kathleen, <laughs> Mrs. Bass, uh, Kimberly Hines Winborn. Thank you so very much. I saw some others. Uh, your name is already your names have already gone by, so I really can't uh, get back to those. But welcome everybody who's just joining in. So for those of you that this is your first time on Impact Academy, welcome. Every single Sunday night, except for fifth Sunday, every single Sunday night, we come to you with new teaching. We come to you with new teaching every single Sunday night at 9 p.m. about how to move into your greater, okay? Your greater gifts, your greater works, your greater calling, uh, greater success, greater purpose, greater anointing. I wrote so many of these down. Greater business, greater career, greater uh, ministry, greater momentum, moving you forward, okay? And tonight, as we talk about finding the right season or finding the right balance in the right season, I'm going to tell you, your eyes are going to be open to a lot tonight okay a whole lot tonight I'm really really excited about this uh, particular teaching because I will tell you when uh, I learned this particular teaching or when I began to understand about balance having the right balance in the right season then my life literally changed okay when I found out about having the right balance in the right season then my life literally changed and I want to share that with you on tonight so we are still in the teaching of, okay, remember, my anointing, the adversary, and my assignment. We are still in that teaching, okay? We have not left that teaching yet. And the overall teaching is called the balance that I need for my assignment. The balance that I need for my assignment. And so tonight, uh, we are going to focus on finding the right balance in the right season. Now, very, very, very quick review. For those of you that this is the first time, I would tell you, uh, please go back and uh, listen and look at uh, video number one and part one and part two of this. If you haven't already done that, if this is your first time, that's fine. You're going to be good tonight. But please go back and listen to part one and part two. There's so much in there about balance and finding balance. And I will tell you, when you go back and listen to that, uh, your eyes will be open to uh, the reasons why you, you're, not, you're not achieving balance in your life. Okay. And so we're going to talk about that. But 
very, very quickly. Remember, uh, we talked about in video one or part one, we talked about the things that keep you out of balance. And we gave you five things that keep you out of balance. If you haven't listened to that video, please go back and listen to that video. Last, uh, last week, uh, which was um, part two, we talked about, we gave you two principles about balance. And then we gave you um, more information on balance being internal and external, making sure that you understand that, that balance is internal and external, because you've got to understand that. And then we also talked about the fact that uh, there are, that balance is multidimensional, that balance is not something linear that you can uh, just jump in and out of, that balance is actually multidimensional. And we talked about that on on last week okay so I'm not gonna go back over that because I've got so much to give you on tonight that I need the entire hour on tonight to be able to go through the entire teaching so a uh, couple of things first of all uh, welcome to everyone but I always want to open with welcome to uh, the inner circle those of you that are in the inner circle welcome welcome you will you, if you haven't already received it you should receive your orientation video on tonight I'm excited about that you should receive your orientation video on tonight and we'll be having our first live session on this week okay and so you'll be receiving the date about that and so those of you that are not in the inner circle uh, you should go to bit.ly backslash the inner circle 2017 to learn about what we're talking about in terms of the inner circle. I don't want to go over a lot about it here because I really want to spend tonight teaching. I do want to tell you too, something the Lord has placed on my heart is that when we do the... Um, when we do the teachings here in Impact Academy, they are focused on helping everyone to uh, to get to your greater, okay? Helping you to move to a, a higher place, okay? And you're a part of this vision building women community. So I teach vision, build, vision building women community and I teach you all how to move to that higher place in Christ. How to move to that higher place. I apologize, I got my computer on the background here. How to move to that higher place in him so that you can move forward and in the inner circle you know and just about everything that i do we talk about uh mindset momentum and movement around your vision around what god has called you to do and that's like at the very beginning level of where where we start our teachings but so if you're new to this if you're new to this teaching then i want you to realize that we have been talking about balance this is the third week so we've been talking about balance for three weeks and and so this third week right here, we're going to focus on the first of seven forces that move you forward towards your balance or, or towards achieving balance. Okay. Now, this is very, very important. And I tell you why. Because so many times people don't find or you don't have balance in your life because you are missing a, a critical component about balance, okay? So many times you don't have balance in your life because you're missing a critical component about balance. Now, remember the one thing that we said is that balance is not about what you do. Balance is about who you are and the decisions that you make. You've got to understand that. Okay, you must understand that my new book is coming out and it's going to be a book all about what I'm teaching you guys. So you guys are getting it actually before the book comes out. <laughs> okay, but I'm teaching you about it here because I'm ready for you guys to walk in it. I know you're ready to walk in balance. I know you want to achieve uh, balance in your life. I know you're tired of struggling, trying to juggle every single thing that you have to do. Yesterday, I, I had the opportunity to speak at a leadership uh, on a leadership panel at um at MetLife for the Girl Scouts and it was absolutely amazing how when uh, one of the questions was on balance and you know I just love that one I had, a, I had a great time with that one but uh it was absolutely amazing how uh not only do we as adults struggle with balance okay but the our young teenagers struggle with balance also 
our young teenagers struggle with balance also. And I'm not a, a, a big um, a person who speaks to youth a lot because I just don't think that's a gifting that I have. But um, but it was very interesting how when I began to talk about balance, the, the mo there were lots of moms there and there were lots of leaders there from um, from MetLife. There were lots of them there too and lots of other leaders from outside. But when we get, began to talk about balance and helping them to understand that, that so many people struggle with it. Okay. And so that's why I know that the Lord just led me to this. I know I forgot to tell you something. I'll go back to it in just a second. But I know that um, God led me to teach about balance before the book comes out because so many people struggle with it. So remember, you've got to remember this one concept. And this is something that the Lord gave me. And that is balance is not about what you do. That balance is about who you are and the decisions that you make. Okay. All right. And so uh, uh, Shanika says, uh, I think that is where it's it starts as young women, not knowing the how and the why of balance. Exactly. Exactly. I think that is exactly where it starts. So many of us grew up watching the women in our lives do so many things. And they did. You know, I grew up watching my mom be a mom, be a wife. Uh, be a worker in the church, taking care of neighborhood kids, doing, uh, going to work every day. I watched her do all those things. Okay. And then when I grew up and I began doing all the things that I do, I thought, I thought I could do it in the same way. Okay. That was not necessarily the case. Okay. One thing, my life is different than hers. Okay. There was so much that, that I'm, that I do that she may not have done or may not be doing. Okay. So, um, you have to understand that sometimes when we think that we have our, our life is balanced or we don't struggle with it or, you know, sometimes we struggle with not spending enough time with our children or we struggle with not spending enough time with our husbands or we struggle with, you know, God has called me to do something, but I just don't have the time to do it. OK, that is because you are not in balance with what you should be doing, okay? And what I'm going to do today is I need, this, this, this teaching right here is so important, okay? I'm going to get to it in just a second. This teaching right here is so important because you, once you understand about having the right balance in the right season, okay? Once you understand about having the right balance in the right season, then you will begin to make decisions differently about the different areas of your life. Okay. So welcome everybody. I see people are coming in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to you all who are watching this on the replay. Glad to have you here. So let's dive deep into tonight's topic. So we are talking about the first thing that you need to do to keep balance. Now I've got seven of these. I can, and I, I really actually thought I could go over all seven. <laughs> I really thought I could actually go over all seven in one teaching, but that is not going to happen. Okay. Not going to happen. And so we need to just take our time and go through these and we should finish them by the end of the year. We should get through all of them actually in the next couple of weeks. Okay. But, um, cause some of them I can do together because of the, because of the length of them. But this particular one takes some time. This particular one takes some time. So the first thing I need you to understand about balance is that, uh, and, we've, and remember if you, I'm sorry, somebody just called me. Okay. If you have not watched the first, um, first and second videos, okay, please go ahead and watch those. You don't necessarily need to watch those in order to understand tonight, but I want you to watch those because it's so important that you get the underlying and the foundation of what we taught prior to these seven things I'm going to give you. Okay. There were lots of foundational material. Now, tonight, what we're going to be talking about is the first, what I call force that moves you forward in terms of balance. And that is finding the right balance in the right season, finding the right balance in the right season. A couple of things I need you to know and understand up front about this. Okay. And that is number one. All right. And that is, is that, that you have multiple seasons going on in your life at one time. Okay. You need to understand this. Okay. You have multiple seasons going on in your life at any given time. Let me say it again. You have multiple seasons going on in your life at any given time. All right. Now I'm going to give you, there are four seasons that we're going to talk about. Four seasons that we're going to talk about. And I'm going to give you those. Okay. But I need for you to understand that you have multiple seasons. 
going on in your life at any given time. All right. So many people say I'm ready to shift to the next season in my life. OK, and you have to keep in mind when you're talking about shifting to a next season, you're not going to shift your work season, your marriage season, your mommy season, your educational season. You're not going to shift all of those to the next level at the same time. You need to understand what the seasons are that you are that 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 impact our life or what are what the different seasons are in our life so that you can define what season you are in in each area of your life okay cuz it could be that the reason that you uh can't balance everything or the reason that you struggle with finding the opportunity and time and everything is because you're trying to operate in the same season in every area or in every area in every area of your life or you are operating in the wrong season in a particular area okay you're not going to find balance in your life if you're operating in a particular season so many people are calling me and I'm not sure why y'all and I don't know how to get off Facebook live to turn this on airplane mode <laughs> so I, I do apologize okay so if you don't know how to operate in a particular season, all right, then you're going to be out, going to be out of balance because you're trying to do something in the wrong season in your life. Okay. Now let's get this clear. So that's the first thing. Is that every now look at um, you don't have to turn to this. I'll, I'll just give it to you. It's Ecclesiastes three and one, and it says, "For everything there is a season." This is Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under the heaven. Now, what that says is that there is a season and a time for everything. That means every... Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Thorne, for scribing for us. That means that every area of your life, everything in your life, there is a season and a time associated with it. You've got to get that. For every area, for every season, there is for every area and everything in your life, there is a season and a time associated with it. Okay? Now, what I want to do is go over with you the seasons that are in our life. These are the seasons. Now, one of the things you have to remember is that if you try to go after an opportunity during a time in your life and it's the wrong season to go or you're not or you're not in the appropriate season to go after that opportunity then what you're going to find is that 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 is not going to work for you okay and once you understand the seasons then you'll see what I'm talking about once you understand the seasons then you'll you'll clearly understand what I'm talking about oh my goodness I've got to stop right here for just about two seconds and say hello to my beautiful auntie who is here, who is one of the first, actually, I think she was the first woman uh, a pastor, preacher, evangelist that I ever knew in my entire life. And that is my auntie, Evangelist Lydia Jones. Mwah! She is online tonight. Hi, auntie. I love you. I love you. Okay, so let's go over the seasons. Okay, let's look at each one of these seasons. I need you all to get this. Now, now first of all, before I go over the seasons, let me tell you one more thing. And that is, that each season that I am getting ready to go over with you, each season that I'm getting ready to discuss, carries with it its own set of constraints, blessings, and demands. Okay? I love you too. <laughs> That's my auntie, y'all. We look just alike. <laughs> Okay, I look like her and my mom and my dad. I got this look about everybody. I got somebody's eyes, got somebody's nose, got somebody's lips, okay? But um, uh, remember that, okay? Each season carries with it, it's a different set of constraints, blessings, and demands, all right? So that's why you have demands from, your, from a season when you're trying to work on ministry. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Um, for those of you that have been praying for me from an acid reflux, 
It's getting much, much better. I'm doing much, much better. Still have a little bit of a dry throat medication I'm on. She gave me a new medication that's working well. My EKG was fine. They had to do that and make sure there was nothing wrong with my heart. Okay, because sometimes, let me give you a little pointer here. Sometimes <clears throat> we think something is acid reflux and it can be a heart attack. But I was not having a heart attack. <laughs> okay, this really, really, really bad acid reflux. Okay, but she's giving me some stuff. And she told me to lay off pizza. And y'all know what? God gave me a whole sermon around laying off pizza. But that's not for tonight. Okay, so remember, each season carries different types of constraints, blessings, and demands. Now, here are the four seasons that we're going to talk about tonight. And I've got to go through this quickly. All right. We're going to talk about the preparation season, the planting season, the nurturing season, and the the last one, get the page, page turn here, is the harvest season. Okay, and we may not even get through all of them tonight, y'all. I don't know. We may not even get through all of them tonight, but we're going to move forward, okay? So now, each of these seasons I'm talking about, you could be in a different season in every area of your life, okay? I need you to see that, okay? So if you're trying to do something in ministry and you're not operating in the right season, then it is will not come. It will not, you won't be able to move forward with it. If you're trying to go back to school and it's not the right season or time in your life to do that, all right, then you're not going to be able to move forward. All right. That's why we say that balance is not about what you do. It's about who you are and the decisions that you make. Okay. Let's start with preparation season. Now the preparation season is the action or process for making something useful for service. Now, I need somebody to do me a favor. I need somebody to give me some timekeeping on here because I don't have my, so I don't have to keep back looking at the, the time over here. I don't have my, uh, my other clock with me tonight. I forgot to bring it in the room before I close the door. Okay, so I need somebody to give me like 9.45, 10 o'clock so I can make sure that I'm off of here by 10.05, okay? All right, so the first one is Preparation season. Preparation season. The preparation literally means the act or process of making something useful for service. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. So making something useful for service. Okay, now let me tell you what takes place during the preparation season. The preparation season is usually the most difficult season there is. It's the most difficult season there is because it's in this season that you will have shaping stripping and purging of things that do not need to be attached to you. Okay? Shaping, stripping, and purging of things that do not need to be attached to you. Okay? It's when God begins to pull things away from you or to separate you from things or people okay, situations and or people, God begins to separate you so that he can begin to prepare you for service, okay? Now, again, the preparation season is the hard, hardest season there is. Preparation, God does before he uses us. So before God puts you in a particular situation, all right, before God puts you in a particular situation, he has to prepare you. He has to prepare you, okay? He has to prepare you. And there are, see, there are scriptures that go with all of these. These will be in my book, okay? I'm not doing all these on the teaching tonight. Um, but these will, these will be in the book when my book comes out. But the season of preparation, I need to tell you, is mandatory. So many times, we try not to prepare ourselves or we try to skip over the preparation and dive right into the vision, the goal, the, the dream or whatever that God has given us, whether it's for your career or your calling or your business or, or your ministry or your life. We try to just jump right into it without being properly prepared. Okay. When you are in a preparation season, you will find yourself in a place where God is taking you through situations or allowing things to happen in your life such that you are being stripped, you are being purged, you are being shaped and getting away from those things that are unnecessary 
or cannot go in with you into the harvest season. We haven't got to the harvest season yet. Okay, but God has to prepare you before he allows you to go into a seed or go into a harvest or go into a a place that you are not properly prepared for. Now, here's the thing. I want you to begin to think about the areas of your life, the things that you do, the areas of your life, the things where you've been struggling with balance. And then ask yourself, what season are you in in every single area? Okay, what season are you in in every single area? And you really need to define it. There's a worksheet that I'm going to send out later on this week, uh, probably tomorrow or Tuesday, that sort of that will sort of help you through all of this. Okay, but you need to look at everything you are and ask yourself. Okay, if God just gives you something, if God gives you. Uh, for example, he, he gives you a ministry to start. He's just not going to give you that ministry and have you start that ministry immediately. Okay. There is a preparation for that. Okay. There is a preparation time. Now you sometimes, and this is, this is what we make mistakes sometimes. Okay. And, and I can speak to this because I, I, I've, I've experienced this myself. Sometimes we go through something. We experience experience something, we go through something, and it helps us to go to another level, or we think that experience has taken us to another level, when really that experience has not taken you to a different level. What that experience has helped you to do is that experience has helped you to trust in God so that God can God can prepare you for where he is taking you. See, sometimes you're in a in a place where you need to be stripped of some people. Sometimes you're in a place where you need to be stripped of some things that are not like God, some attitudes or some uh, uh or some some habits or some things that just aren't like him or that don't bring him glory and whether it's in your career or in your business or wherever it is or in your calling or in your ministry and sometimes you've got to be God will strip you of those things in this preparation phase so that you can move into what he is calling you to do. Don't, don't, don't jump into, all right? Yeah, I need y'all to hear me. Don't jump into something that you have not been properly prepared to do. Okay. Don't jump into somebody. I, I, someone told me the other week that they were getting ready to leave their job and and leave their job and get ready to start their business. And I said, Well, what what what, 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 what type of planning have you done? Okay. What are your finances like? Okay. Do you have a financial plan that goes along with that? Uh, Pastor Vanessa Johnson says yes, because I know when she and uh, Pastor Reggie told me they were leaving, I said, Whoa, hold on, wait a minute. Where's your plan? What have you done? <laughs> And now they, they did that, and now they've gone to Virginia. God bless both of them. And they have a beautiful ministry starting there in, in Virginia, or started in Virginia. And so, but when you jump out, and you get ready, and you move into something that you have not allowed God to properly prepare you for, let me tell you, you will not be able to move forward in it. What's going to happen is you are going to get frustrated because you don't understand, you you wonder, you say, well, God, you know, why are why is all this happening to me? It's because you didn't go through the proper preparation to be able to handle the constraints, the blessings, and the demand, okay, of what you're getting into. Okay, come on now. When you are properly prepared, when you allow God to strip you, to define you, to shape you, to take things off of you that cannot go with you into this new thing that he's taking you into, that's preparation season. When you allow God to do that, and then when you get into this new thing, when you get into, it could be a new marriage, okay? You could be getting married for the first time. It could be a new job. It could be going back to school after years and years and years. It could be uh, doing something different in your household. It could be starting a business. It could be writing a book. Whatever it is, you have to understand that you've got to take the time. You've got to allow God to do what he's going to do in you so that you can be prepared for where he is taking you. Okay? You've got to understand that. If you skip the preparation season, If you skip the preparation season, then 
you will not be able to move forward. What will happen is that you will find your, yourself frustrated. You will find yourself angry. You will find yourself in a place that you don't understand why you're there because you've done everything that you thought you were, you were to do. Remember, you cannot prepare yourself. Write that down, somebody. Okay? You cannot prepare yourself. God is the one that defines your preparation. God is the one. It doesn't matter what it is. If we're children of God, which we all are, okay? We are mighty women of God. And God has given us uh, what he wants us to do. You don't define the preparation for that. God defines the preparation for that. And you cannot prepare yourself. Okay, you cannot prepare yourself just like as you go through, uh, you went through kindergarten, through uh, high school, graduated. Uh, then some of you went on to college and went on other degrees or you went on to uh, a job and, and or whatever. You couldn't prepare yourself for those things. People and situations had to be put in place to prepare you for those things in your life. Okay, you can't prepare yourself for that. Just like you cannot prepare yourself for your assignment that God has for you, all right? God has to prepare for that, pre pre prepare you for that. And let me give you something else. God is the one that designs the preparation. He allows the preparation. So if there's something about you that needs to be stripped, then God is going to have to design something or allow something in the preparation stage to happen to you such that you can be stripped of that, that attitude. You can be stripped of whatever it is that God knows that if you took that into the vision, into the assignment that he's giving you, the assignment would not move forward. Okay? So that's why it's so important, y'all. You've got to understand these seasons. Okay? And let me tell you, you can be in the preparation season in one area of your life. Okay, you can be in the preparation season in one area of your life and be in a different season in another. Okay, Prepar you can be in the preparation season in one area of your life and be in a different season in another. So if you understand the preparation season, let me see some likes on the screen. If you're understanding, oh, thank you, Kathleen. If you're understanding the preparation season, let me see some likes on the screen. Let me make sure you're understanding this and you understand that you've got to be prepared. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful. I see them coming through. All right? So now, remember that every season carries with it its own constraints, its own blessings, and its own time demands. All right? You got to understand that. All right. So now let's look at the next season. The next season is the planting season. You think about crops. That's what we're doing. Okay. I don't, some, some people think of seasons in terms of fall, spring, winter, and summer. That is not how the Bible describes seasons. If you look in Genesis, the Bible describes seasons in terms of farming. Okay. Because season is defined in terms of a harvest. And so when you look at this in Genesis, I think, I don't remember off, off the top of my head, uh, where it is in Genesis, but if you look at this in Genesis, it talks about a farmer harvesting his crops. Okay. And it talks about the preparation, the planting, the, uh, the, uh, nurturing and then the harvest of that season of that of that that crop and then the harvest time is where it comes forth so anyway let's look at the next one is planting now planting is also a hard season mm, let me tell you why because planting is when planting is when you are set in the ground for growth okay now planting is hard because in the planting season you are put in a place so that you can start to grow. The planting season is, is the place where sometimes, all right, depends on what, what God is doing with you, but the planting season is where you have to be still and know that he is God. <laughs> okay, that's the planting season. In the planting season, the planting season is not where you're going to find the manifestation of what it is that God is calling you to do. So many people think, well, I'm getting ready to plant this or I'm getting ready to plant that. Before you can plant anything, God has to plant you. Okay? Get that. Planting, before you can plant anything, God has to plant you. All right? All right? All right, Darlene, Pastor Thorne says, planting is where you are set in the ground for growth. You are put in a place where you're to start to grow. Exactly. You have to be still and know that he is God. Thank you so much. That is exactly it. 
That is exactly it. Okay. So now let me tell you some more things about the planning season. Um, attitude, attitude about what you are doing is key in this season. If you, like we used to say in the country, buck up against, <laughs> all right. If you rebel against what God is trying to do for you and to you in this season, you won't move forward. Okay, you're not going to find well, what you're looking for. This is a season where most of us tend to get out of balance because we felt we've been prepared. We've gone through something, you know, and God has done this and God has done this in my life. I know this has been stripped off of me and everything. And then we get to the planting season and God puts us in a place. All right. Now, this place could be school. This place could be some, for some of you, maybe a new church. This could, place could be a new time in your life. But God is placing you somewhere. And we often think that we're supposed to run and run and run and do something or run or do something different when God is actually planting us for growth. OK, this is a time when you need to sit still, be obedient Okay, and you need to hear what people, what the right people, okay, what the right people are saying to you. All right, now you have to understand something about the planting season, also. Think about this in the natural. In the natural, all right, the, this is when the seed goes in the ground in the natural and it gets covered up. The seed is going to burst and it is going to start, start to bring forth what it was purposed to bring forth, okay? So if your seed is a new job, if your seed is a ministry, if your seed is um, um, something new in your life, if your seed is making a major decision and you're trying to do that, whatever that seed is, you're getting ready to be, you're in the planting season, you've been prepared, now you're in the planting season and God has placed you in a place, okay? Or God has put you someplace, all right? It may be new, it, may be a new job. It may be a new ministry. It could be the same ministry where you are. Okay. It could be where you are, but, but, but you have been, uh, you need to sit back and step back and not do anything, but you, you're in there. You're now covered. And now you begin to grow because you're getting ready to come for getting ready to break out and come forth. All right. Exactly. The seed also needs the right amount of water and sunlight. OK, we're going to talk about that some more in nurturing, but you're correct. But the key here is that you're getting planted someplace. You're getting planted someplace and you need to be obedient to what you are hearing God say to you through his word. Hear what God is saying to you through prayer. Hear what God is saying through to you through the men and men and women who can speak into your life. Now you have to understand everybody cannot speak into your life. I am not a proponent of having everybody speak into your life. You need to know who are the right people to speak into your life, all right? You need to understand that. You need to understand that. And one thing about balance for your assignment, okay? Everybody cannot speak and help that seed begin to come out and to burst and to come out. Everybody cannot speak into that, all right? The reason they cannot speak into that is because God has not chosen them to speak into your life. Okay? God has not chosen them to speak into your life. That's why you have to be very careful and you have to stay in God's presence. Yes, right? People, I'm right people at the right time. I see that Pastor Thorne. You've got to stay in the, in the right people and you've got to stay in God's presence to make sure that you're hearing from him so that when people, oh my goodness, my mentor is on here, Dr. Brown, Dr. Brown, how are you, how are you? <laughs> so you have to make sure that you have the right people speaking into you because if you don't have the right people speaking into you, you could move too quickly. You could actually, you got to get this, instead of growing and bursting out and coming forth out of the ground and growing as how God intends, it could be that someone has uncovered you and just taken the seed out. Okay, and when something happens and, un and you're uncovered and the seed is just taken out of the ground, then the seed has not grown properly. Okay, you have to be you have to be very careful in the planting season because it is in the planting season when 
people and situations will try to uproot and destroy your purpose. Okay? It is in the planting season when people and situations will try and attempt or the adversary uses people and situations. Okay, get that right. The adversary will use people and situations to try to uproot you from your assignment, try to get you distracted from your assignment, try to have hindrances from your assignment. You've got to understand that when you are planted, you've got to sit still. You've got to hear from God. You've got to stay in the word. You've got to make sure you have some mentors around you that are in your life that can help you. Because if you don't, all right, if you don't, you will attempt to move forward and what will happen is you could be moving forward in the wrong direction. You could be moving forward with the wrong people. You could be moving forward even mm, with the wrong assignment. Because see, it's in the planting season when the adversary tries to shift you and take you to a place that God never intended for you to go. It's in the planting season. Instead, when I say be still and be planted so you can grow, it's in the planting season where people will try to give you additional assignments. And they give you those additional assignments. They give you these things that God never intended for you. Okay, they give you these things to do that become busy work. You know what? I heard a, um, oh my goodness, where is my book? Uh, an acronym for busy. I may have told you this last week that busy, I think it's bound under Satan's yoke. Bound under Satan's yoke. Busy. I think that's what it means. I can't, I may have a little bit backwards there, but it's in the planting season. Okay, it's in the planting season where if you don't stay planted so that the seed that God has put in you can be rooted and grounded in him, in God. If you don't stay, thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, thank you. I really need that tonight. Thank you so much. If you don't stay in the, and stay planted so you can get rooted and grounded in God, all right, then you are not going to move forward. You're going to wonder, am I, why, why, why is my assignment not moving forward? You're going to wonder, you know, why, God, I know you gave this to me, but why can't I find the, the time and the right balance to do this with everything else in my life? It's because you move too soon. It's because instead of staying planted so that you could grow, all right, you started over here doing something else and doing something else and doing something else, okay? You can't do that. See, when you get planted, all right, the enemy will try to come and kill and steal and destroy, all right? He will come and try to steal, kill, and destroy. But what you have to do is you have to make sure that you trust the God, you trust God, you are obedient, and, and you have faith in what God has called you to do. Even when people try to add things to your assignment that you know God has not said for you to do. Remember we said, I don't remember if it was uh, part one or part two, where we said that every good thing is not a God thing. Every good thing is not God. A God thing. Let me say it one more time. Every good thing is not a God thing. You need to understand that. All right. So now it's in the planning season that God is going to mature you. Everything that you went through in the preparation season, you're going to begin to understand why in the planting season. All right. You're going to understand why did I have to go through that hurt? Why did I have to go through that pain? Why did I have to go through that experience? You're going to understand God is going to begin to reveal to you the why of things, the why of things that were happening in your life in your preparation season. He is going to begin to reveal them to you in the planting season. Because remember, it's in the planting season where you are put in the ground for growth and then you're going to be, you're going to get ready to grow. All right. All right, you're going to be ready, going to prepare yourself to grow. And remember, in the planting season, you've got to find that iron sharpens iron. You've got to find, it's in the planting season where you need the right mentors. You need to search for those right mentors, those people who can mentor you, okay? And stop getting mentors that haven't done what you're trying to go. Stop getting mentors that, 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 that have nothing to do with what God has called you to. Okay, all right. My mentor is on here, Dr. Shirley Brown, and I tell you what, uh, when she mentors you, I don't everybody try try to run out there and get mentored by her now. It don't work that way. 
<laughs> okay. Shirley Brown has been my mentor for over 20 plus years. Okay. But when she mentors you, when she mentors us, she speaks to us from the very, from the very depth of what God has given her for us. Okay, so you have to understand that in terms of ministry and and life and even my career, even all different areas of my life, she's able to mentor that. She's able to speak a word of life into that. That's because she's been through all those areas herself. Most people, most people cannot do that for you because they just don't know. <laughs> I see you laughing, Dr. Brown. Some of them just don't know. Okay, that's one of the reasons why I started the inner circle, because I just I know that people struggle with finding the right mentor, struggle with finding someone who can speak to so many areas of their life. Okay, trying to find someone um, um, to be able to uh, speak to him. Y'all know what? I just got this text right here on my phone and I just feel like running around my, uh, my house right now. But you know what? I got to I got to hold it down. I got to hold it down. <laughs> Got to hold it down. All right. So anyway, you got the uh, Kathleen. Help me out here. I got the preparation. I've got the planting. Now the nurturing season. Now remember, preparation and planting are hard. They're hard because the enemy tries to take you out right in those two. Now he tries to take you out in the other ones too, but he definitely tries to take you um, uh, out in those first two. Okay. Shanika says, uh, don't run and get mentored by, uh, don't run out and get mentored by Charlie Brown. If you're not ready. That's right. That's right. Uh, Dr. Christine, that's some doctor. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. It's 945. Thank you, Kathleen. Yes, I agree. I learned what I know about mentoring. I learned how to speak into, it's not a lot. I mean, I hear from the Lord, but I also learned the etiquette because there's a right way to speak into the lives of women and there's a wrong way to speak into the lives of women. There's a right way to do things. There's a right way to uh, uh, just be able to help women. I learned all of that from my mentor as I watched her speak into my life and speak into the lives of others. And I have other mentors also. I have business mentors. I have speaking mentors. I have uh, other kinds of corporate men. I have different people who mentor me in different areas. And you need the same thing. Okay, for those of you that are in the inner circle, we are going to talk about that. And one of the things that you're going to do is that you are going to find your personal mentoring network. I'm not going to go any further with that because that's for the inner circle. But you're going to be able to find that. And, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to get you moving because some of you have been stuck for too long. Some of you have been in preparation for too long. You've been struggling. You've been going through. You've been here. You've been there. And you've been stuck for too long. And God has given us assignments. And he needs those assignments to move forth. Okay? He gives them to us. But we stay stuck. And we don't get them done. Why is it? It's because we're either stuck in preparation. Or we're stuck in planting. Okay? One of the two. And let me tell you, let me tell you a secret right here. Is that when you don't get successful or you're not successful in planting, then you got to go back through preparation. You don't move on to the next, the next, um, the next season. You don't move on to nurturing if planting has not been successful. Okay. You don't move on to planting if preparation has not been successful. Okay. And let me tell you something else. You're going to go through these over and over and over again. We're going to talk about that in the end. Let's get moving. Let me get moving. The last one is the watering or the nurturing season. Watering or nurturing. I call it, I go back and forth on each one of them. Water or nurturing season. Okay. Now this is a time. This is critical right here. Because this is a time where you feast on the word of God. You feast on the word of God. This is time where you need to develop a strong prayer life. You need to do things that really relate to your purpose. If God has called you to go back to school, you need to start making the preparations. Okay. If God has called you to write a book, you should uh, start doing the writing now. They start doing the kinds of things here. If God has called you to start a ministry, you need to start determining what does it take Okay, to go and do this, but ground everything in the word of God. If God has said, now's the time for you to get a new career, then you need to begin looking and putting out your resumes and sending out your resumes and that sort of thing. This is a time in that. This is a time when you develop that prayer life, the time when you feast on the word of God. This is a time when you don't, don't get mixed up and start doing, start going too far. This is a time when you start to study and research and start doing and finding out what are those things that I need to do? What are those things that I need to do? The, the watering season, the nurturing season is when you develop your plan. The nurturing season is when you begin to develop that plan of what it is that you need to do. 
Okay, the nurturing season is when you have your, and I don't have one here with me because um, they're all on that side of the room. Okay, but the nurturing season is when you begin to develop the plan for what God has called you to do. So many times we jump with no plan. Let me say that again. So many times we jump with no plan. We get through preparation. We get through planting. And then we try to skip over nurturing and get right into harvest. Okay, we try to skip over the watering. We try to skip over what we need to do in developing this plan. We try to skip over all that because we think, oh, I've gone through something now. Oh, God has prepared me. Oh, I've gone through it. So now I'm ready to help every woman find her purpose. Oh, I'm, I'm ready to help every woman move forward. Oh, I'm ready to help every woman do this or help every woman do that. And you can't do it because you have not put a plan together. You have not watered. Okay, you have not nurtured and watered what God has placed on the inside of you. What God did for you in preparation, what he did for you in planting, if you don't water it and nurture it, if you don't take it such that you begin to have people pour into you, okay? If you don't have if you don't do that, then you're still not going to be successful. You're still not going to be successful and get to the harvest. If you don't do it, you got to start all over, over back again. So okay, thank you Kathleen. Thank you so much. You're you're wonderful. You begin to wonder, why is it that I went through this? I went through that and this experience and that experience and now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden stuff isn't working. That's because and then I got I, I I did what you told me to do, Lord. I, I, I started this ministry. I, I went to this new job. I, I, I changed this aspect of my life, God. I, I, I did this and I, and I did that. God, why isn't it working? Because you still stepped out too soon. You've got to water. You've got to nurture what it is God gave you. You've got to put a plan to it. That's why the scriptures say, write the vision and make it plain. Okay? So that those who read it can run with it. Okay, the reason that you can't run with your vision or nobody else can is because you didn't take the time to get clear. See, it's in the watering and the nurturing season when you become and get clear on your assignment. Okay, it's in this season that you get clear on your assignment and the skipping. Okay. Dr. Brown says no skipping, a hybrid. It's not the, it's right. It's not the original intent. If you skip the watering, nurturing season, then you will more than likely miss the original intent of your assignment. Ooh, that's good. Okay. If you skipped it, skipped it, you will more than likely miss the original intent of your assignment. Okay. Exactly, Vanessa. A plan is not a plan is not written. A plan not written is just conversation. Ooh, I like that. Exactly. A plan not written is just conversation. That is so true. A plan that is not written is just a conversation. Let me tell you some more things about the watering and nurturing season. Some things you need to be um, put. Make sure you understand. Okay. It's in this season again that you'll need your mentors. It's in this season that you'll need people around you to help you plan to help you write out, to help you get clarity on what God has called you to do, whether it's work, whether it's school. I'm telling you, what we teach here in the Impact Academy, it doesn't matter where your assignment is or what your assignment is. Because you're a child of God, what we're teaching you goes in all of those different areas, okay? All right, so um, now God will, it's in the nurturing season, and this is important. It's in the nurturing season where God will bring somebody into your life all right? He will bring to someone in, in your life to begin to help you. Don't think that person is supposed to stay in your life forever, okay? Because it's in the nurturing season that they are nurturing and helping you so that you can grow and get to harvest. They are not there to stay in your life forever, okay? I'll give you, a, I'll give you an example. There's a young lady that I was helping. It's been a while back now, but I was helping her and she was going through a trying and almost horrific time in her life. I met with her every single week. I've really never done that before, uh, especially in person, but I met with her every single week, I think for about maybe two or three months. All right. And I knew that what was in her 
would eventually come out. I knew that. I knew that at that particular time that I was working with her, that uh, she was in the preparation season. I knew that. I knew that. And God used me and some other people to pour into her life. Okay. But when it was time for her to move on, because had God had gotten her through everything and now she'd gone through everything and she, she took some hits now. Believe me, she took some hits. But then when she got to the harvest, when she got in her harvest season, the next season after after um, watering and nurturing, when she got into that season, she didn't need us like she needed us anymore. See, so many times we want to become dependent. We want to become dependent on those people who are helping us through every season. A, te a first grade teacher does not go with you to second grade. OK, a second grade teacher does not go with you to middle school. OK, your middle school teachers did not go with you to high school and your high school teachers. For those of you that went on to higher education, they did not go with you to college. Your job that you had as a 16 year old, the manager that taught you there did not go on with you to, with the job that you have today. You have to know that it's in the nurturing and watering season when God puts people in your life to help you get through some things so that you can be nurtured and be prepared correctly so that you can go on to the next 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 season they are not going to stay there sometimes we get angry thank you kathleen we get and for those of you that are watching this on the replay kathleen's keeping the time for me <laughs> okay we get angry when people leave our lives, we get angry because we've spent so much time with them and, and we pour it out and they know so much about us. That's because they were there to water you. They were there to nurture you. They were not there to carry you. Okay. They were your guide during a season, not your ride. Okay. They were not there to just say every, uh, or, or be with you from now on. You know why? Because what they were put there for, they're going to help you get to the harvest that they were put, put that they were put in your life for, but they may not be the person that takes you through the next season for the next harvest. You've got to understand the seasons. Now, here's the thing I want you to know. Is that in some areas of your life, you could be in a planting season. In some areas of your life, you could be in a preparation season. In some areas of your life, you could be in a nurturing season. And you need to look at the areas in your life and be able to differentiate which season you are in. Ooh, let me let that sink in for a minute while I read Dr. Grant's comment. And sometimes the people want to stay in the season, although they are supposedly positioned to help us to the next one. That's right. You was right. We may surpass the people that, that are in the season with us. And that's what God used them for. That's what God used them for. All right. So, but let me, let me make sure that you understand. Because if you don't define the season that you were in, all right, what's going to happen is you're going to wonder you're going to understand you're going to begin to understand why people are in and out of your life all right you'll understand that there are some people in your life that are in your life for a planting season and they're not going to go with you to nurturing or there are some people in your life that are there for your preparation but they were not meant to be there in your in for your nurturing and your watering season <laughs> Shanika, you are so funny. Shanika says, I understand the concept that you're explaining, but you can't leave me. You know I'm not leaving you. You're one of my children. <laughs> All right? You're one of, you'll be there forever. <laughs> okay? Iron always sharpens iron. Okay? That's wonderful. I, you know what? I say the same thing, Shanika, that you wrote there. For those of you that can't, I just read her comment. For those of you that are watching this on YouTube, you can't see the comment. But I say the same thing, Shanika, that you just said for my mentors that I have in my life. I don't want them to leave me either. But here's what I understand is that they, not, they won't leave me, okay? But they are mentors. They may not be the people. They could or may or may not be the people that are watering you and nurturing you in a particular season. They could encourage you in that season, but they may not be the people that God has chosen to water and to nurture you. Okay. So now let me keep moving. So now, um, uh, the, if you survive, last thing, if you survive, thank you, Kathleen. If you survive the watering season, then you're almost to destiny for that area of your life. Now you have to understand something. One of the things that we say over and over and over in the Vision Building Institute is that when you move, God will position you for more. And you need to understand something, that as we talk about the next season, which is harvest, 
And it's in the harvest season that you see the manifestation of what, of your assignment. You actually begin to see your assignment coming to fruition. You actually begin to see the assignment that God has for you. And you actually see that happening. Here is the thing. When God gets rid of you to do something else, you got to start back over preparation, with planting, with watering to get to another harvest. You wonder, why is it? that I got to go through and through and I got to experience this and this is happening in my life or this is happening in the life of someone I love and it's, and it's impacting me or why is this happening? It's because God is positioning you for more and he positions you for more by taking you through these different seasons in areas of your life. You, I love that exactly, Doctor uh, uh, Pastor Thorne, a new crop. When God gets ready, gets ready to plant a new crop in you, when he gets ready to give you a new assignment, all right, then you're going to have to go right back through the seasons. You're going to take what you learn throughout the first planting, uh, excuse me, preparation and planting and, and nurturing and watering and harvest. You're going to take what you learn in that. That's going to go in you with the preparation again, and you're going to learn something even larger. You know, it's interesting that people say, God expand my territory, but they do not want to go through the pains, all right, of expansion, okay? Because expanding can hurt, all right? It can hurt. There can be pain in the experience. There can be people that walk away from you, and that's part, all part of preparation, okay? All right? It's 10 o'clock. I've got one more. Let me quickly get through this one, okay? The next one is harvest. Harvest is where you see the manifestation of your purpose, okay? In harvest time, is what you need to understand here. In harvest time, the enemy, the adversary is going to use people to attempt to block your destiny. The enemy is going to make things look so big and so horrible that you are not going to want to walk into the harvest. This is where you've got to know what God has brought you through. You've got to know what God has done for you. You've got to know that God is now taking you to a new place. You've got to know this and so that you will not be blinded by the adversary. Okay, Harvest time means that everything now that you've experienced, God is now saying you can take all of that and now you can enter into your destiny. This is where you will see harvest times is where you'll see doors begin to open. Okay? Harvest time is where you will see sometimes God open, opens a door and he's opening a door. God is not going to open a door that you're not prepared for. God is not going to open a door that he's already has not planted you that you can grow so that you can walk through the door. God is not going to open a door that you have not been properly nourished for. Now let me tell you, uh, nurtured for. Now let me tell you something. When you walk through that door, you're in harvest. But when you walk through the door, you've got to be prepared for what's on the other side. You've got to be prepared for what's on the other side. Okay? So your faith is going to be matured in harvest. Okay? There can be some giants, some distractions, for some hindrances could also happen in harvest. People think harvest is wonderful, but remember what happens in the harvest. The, the harvest, what happens in the harvest is that what was planted has now grown up and it's time to cut it down so that it can work. Okay? Think about it in the natural. It's time to cut it down so that it can work, so that it can do what it was purposed to do. All right? Your harvest time also means separation. Okay? Because now you're supposed to be working. You're supposed to be moving through and doing that thing, that assignment that God has called you to do. So you might have to leave some people for a season. You might have to walk away from some people and say, you know what? I just can't stay right here. Exactly, uh, Deborah. You've got to stay focused in the harvest. Okay? There will be people that may not be able to enter the harvest with you. You better understand that one. Okay, you better understand that one because you're going to try to take people into the harvest with you who have not been through the preparation, who have not been planted, who have not been nurtured the same way you have. And you want them to come along with you and they cannot. They cannot. They have not been uh, prepared, planted or nurtured and watered the same way that you have to go through the door and to do the assignment that God has called you to do. Okay. Now, um, one thing about the harvest season. Um, some people, sometimes, we get to the harvest and then we don't carry out the assignment. Okay? Sometimes, we will get to the harvest and then we don't carry out the assignment. Let me give you a secret. Get to the harvest. Don't carry out the assignment that God has called for you. 
in that season, then preparation, planting, and nourishing. All right? It's going to happen all over again. Remember, balance is a process. As we said, balance is multidimensional. Balance is internal and external. Balance is about the decisions that you have to make. Okay, about everything that you do, your the, the the decisions that God gives us the ability to make about the different areas of our life. Okay, you've got to understand that if you want to have the right balance in the right season, you've got to understand what are the different seasons that I am in, and then ask yourself, for your your personal self, what are the constraints. What are the things that are trying to hold me back in this season? What are the blessings that God has given me in these seasons? What are the demands on my time, on my life, on my health, on my finances? What are the de demands of, of me on e it during each one of these seasons? They will be completely different, y'all. When you understand that the seasons in your life, Okay, the season of what God has you going through dictates the balance. Okay, so here's the thing. You can't be in harvest in every single, every single area of your life. Okay, you can't be in preparation. And if you're in preparation in every single area of your life, all right, you're going to be pitiful because you're going to be constantly going through in every single area of your life. And some of you, that may be happening to you. And if it is, then you need to regroup and relook at some stuff. Okay. Dr. Grant says, balance is being about learning and not about compromising excellence. Yes, I'm going to use that one. <laughs> balance, being about learning and not compromising excellence. Exactly. When you have the excellence, when you have what God has called you to do, when you are walking in that assignment, when you are doing it, then and you're doing it in the right season or and not or and you understand the season that you're in according to your assignment. So now, look at the assignment that God has had you to do. That won't be for free. Okay, I owe you $5. <laughs> Dr. Grant, that's, a, that's an inside joke y'all. Y'all have to know what she's doing. But look at the what God has called you to do. Look at what God has called you to do and ask yourself, which of these seasons am I in? Am I in the preparation season? Am I in the planting season? Am I in the nurturing or watering season? Am I in the harvest season? Which one of these seasons am I in? And then make sure you understand what is God doing for me, to me, and through me in this season? What are the difficulties, the constraints, okay? What are the hindrances? What are the distractions that I'm having in this season? Okay, what are the blessings that God is giving me in this season? What are the demands on me that God is giving me in this season or that are that are happening in my life in this season? Because, see, when you understand that, then you can begin to balance what God has called you to do. You won't go out here and try to do a 200 people conference and you don't even know how to get two people together in a room. OK, you won't go out here and try to speak to uh, or, or try to t get a speaking engagement for 5,000 people, okay? And you don't even know how to prepare a speech for 200. Come on now. God is going to expand our territory, okay? When he expands your territory, all right? Yes, he'll expand your territory. You'll find balance in all that, but he's got to take you through the process, okay? Balance. And at the end of balance, at harvest, Harvest is about expansion. Harvest is about expanding your territory. When you're at that time, you will see the manifestation of your purpose begin to happen. You will see your assignment. Things begin to fall into place. You will see the doors beginning to open. You will be able to see all of that. But it is a process. It is a process, y'all. You can't, like they say, you can't jump over it. You can't run around. You've got to go through this process. You've got to go through the process of balance, of finding the right balance in the right season. 
Now again, I gave you a little bit of an assignment. Okay, it's not something that you have to turn in, but I really want you to begin to think about this and, and understand this, okay? And that is, look at each area of your life. Just write it down. I think we did this one time. If you remember, we said there were all these things that we were working on, all these things that we were doing, okay? Kind of categorize those into uh, areas of life, of ministry, of work, of career, of calling. Kind of categorize them if you can. And then begin to ask yourself, in each of those areas, am I in a plant, uh, a preparation season, a planting season, a nurturing, watering season, or a harvest season? Which season am I in? And then ask yourself for, me to, for each one of those about the, the difficulties, the constraints, the blessings, the, the, um, the, the constraints, the blessings, and the demands for each one of those. Ask yourself about that for each one of those. And then make some decisions on that. There may be some things, some things and some people that you need to give up so that you can get through planting. There may be some things and some situations or some different kinds of things that you need to let go of, okay, so that you can be planted, so that you can be prepared and be planted so you can grow. There may be some new people that you need to allow in your life. There may be some, some of you need to up-level the people that you're hanging around. Some of you need to up-level, okay, or take it to the next level, the people that you're involved with. Okay, some of you need to do that. I've had two people tell me recently that they uh, want that they they, they 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 want to work with me because they just feel like that God is calling them to a new level and they're trying to up level or they desire to up level their community. Okay, or take their community to the next level. The reason that some of you can't take can't go to the next level is because you're still hanging around the same community. All right, and I'm sorry. All right, if people could take you, if the people you're hanging around could take you to another level, you'd already be there. Okay, let me tell you something. Every time I sit in the presence of my mentors, ooh, thank you, Kathleen, I'm, I'm way over. Every time I sit in the presence of my mentors, I go to another level. I never go to sit in a conversation with uh, my mentors without my book, okay? This is my book that I write my notes in and stuff. Never, ever. Either I have a book or I have something to write with, okay? Exactly, cleaning out that front row. I never, ever do that. And I will tell you, if you want to get to that next level, if you're ready to find and get in the right season, in the right place. Hey, Ernestine, I didn't realize you're on here. Okay. If you're ready to get in that right season at the right time, in the right place, so you can find the balance, so you can do the assignment that God has called you to do. Okay. Then you might have to do some up leveling. Okay. Level up, like they say, or move up. Okay, of your community. It's not that you're saying you're too good for anybody, but you need to move up your community. All right. So now tonight we did the very one of the, the very first force that we say helps you move forward and find that balance that you need. And that is determining and understanding your season. I hope this helped you because as you move forward in your career, in your calling, in your in your ministry, in your life, in your finances, whatever however you're moving to, moving forward to, you need this kind of teaching. You need to think about this. Think about the season that you're in as you move up. Okay, as God takes you to a different place. Okay, some of you got promotions on I'm not sure who I'm speaking to, but some of you've just gotten a promotion on your job think about the season that you're in just because you got a promotion does not mean you it's harvest you get a promotion sometimes a promotion is part of preparation mm, think about it because when God promotes you into one area he's now he promotes you and that promotion is now preparation for the next mm, come on you better get that one all right you better get that one all right so now Next week, we are going to cover knowing the three C's in your life. I'm not going to tell you what those three C's are right now. We're going to cover knowing the three C's in your life and understanding the three C's. I hope you all have enjoyed tonight's teaching. Like I said, I always get so excited when it's time for Impact Academy. I absolutely love coming to you each and every Sunday night with this. I only do this here at Impact Academy. I am getting ready to do a, a different kind of teaching. I haven't decided yet if it's going to be on Paris scope or Facebook live. I haven't decided yet. Uh, I may, I may do both. I haven't decided, uh, trying to work through that, but, uh, going to actually do a Bible study. I really, really believe that the people of God need to hear, go hear teaching from a teacher. Okay. Uh, according to, I think it's, what is it? Ephesians 4, 11. I am a teacher and that's what I've been called to do. And that's what I've got to do. All right. So yes, next week we're going to be doing the understanding of three C's of balance. And we're going to be talking about the three C's of balance next week. So we're going to be going over those. I hope everybody's going to be on here next week. If you, uh, there's still time 
to sign up for the Inner Circle. The Inner Circle will open on a monthly basis. All right, the, we've, we've planned this where the Inner Circle can open on a monthly basis. So if you didn't get in already and you're looking at October, it's still not too late. Go ahead because uh, the people who are already in it are going to get some, the, who jumped in first are going to get some benefits. Those of you that wait till after this won't get the same benefits. But the people who, who jumped in first are going to get some benefits that some of you may not get. Please hold your, uh, hold your, calendar for Saturday, December 2nd. Uh, just hold it for right now. Okay, just hold that date. Uh, we're going to be doing something and we're going to be bringing that to you a little bit later on. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Christine. And thank each and every one of you for giving me the opportunity to come in and teach you on tonight on finding the right balance in the right season. Y'all have a wonderful week. And for those of you that are watching on the replay, have a great week. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, thank you so much and have a wonderful week. And you see you next time. Bye-bye.